Everybody says a base model Mac Mini is too weak for Unreal Engine. 16 gigs of RAM, integrated GPU, forget it, right? Well, I don't buy that. Today we're going to push this little box until it either proves them wrong or completely collapses. Here's the hardware on trial. The Mac Mini M4, 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, and 16 gigabytes of unified memory. No upgrades, the cheapest model you can buy. Storage is Apple's soldered. Underneath, I've stacked the Mini Superu Mini 4 Pro dock. And this thing isn't just a stand, it adds a 4K60 HDMI port, front USB ports, SD card slots, a groove power button, and an NVMe bay. I dropped in a 1TB Western Digital Blue Drive, but remember, it's capped at 10 gigabit speeds. Great for assets and backups, not a miracle worker. Every test here runs at 1920, 1080 on macOS with two monitors connected, so no excuses, this GPU is under real stress. And since Nanite doesn't even exist on macOS, the torture comes from huge textures, shader compiles, and dense materials. And just to crank it up even further, OBS Studio is recording the whole time, chewing CPU and memory while we benchmark. We're going to measure everything, editor open times, shader compiles, FPS in live gameplay, and load times internal SSD versus external NVMe head-to-head. -head. So let's see if the so-called budget Mac Mini can actually develop games or if it dies trying. For the baseline, I used Unreal's first-person template with the Arena Shooter variant, a small map with running, jumping, and shooting perfect for a clean test. On Apple's internal SSD, the project opened in about 22 seconds. Shader compile was light, and once inside, performance ranged between 30 and 47 frames per second. Smooth enough to move around, though clearly GPU bound. And yes, I still die to the bots. Running the same project from the NVMe inside the Mini 4 Pro dock, open time was roughly 20 seconds. That tiny 2 second gap is just margin of error. In-game frame rates matched the internal SSD almost exactly, between 30 and 47 FPS. Looking at system usage, overall CPU load was about 15% on the user side. Memory-wise, the Mac Mini used 13.3 GB out of 16, with 2.5 GB cached and about 700 MB swapped. So the whole 16 gigs is already in play, even in this simple project. So for light projects, the Mini Superu Mini 4 Pro dock handles Unreal perfectly well, load times are nearly identical, FPS is unchanged, and the real limit here is GPU and memory, not the drive. Next up, we push into a moderate project with more assets and heavier your textures. Quick note before we dive in, between tests, Apple actually pushed out a brand new macOS update. So from this point on, everything you see is running on the latest OS 26. Hopefully no surprises, but let's see. For the moderate benchmark, I went with Epic's Lyra Starter Game. This is a complete third-person shooter project. Menus, arenas, HUD elements, crosshairs, even pop-up text when you land a shot. Basically, it's a full featured demo of what a finished game can look like straight from Epic. The first time I opened Lyra, it had to compile a mountain of shaders. That initial load took 2 minutes and 57 seconds, basically 3 minutes. Once inside though, FPS surprised me. It was almost identical to the simple project, floating between 29 and 45 frames per second. Early on, there were dips while shaders were still compiling or when switching maps, but after a minute or two it stabilized and felt solid. Closing and reopening the project after shaders were cached was a completely different story. It only took 15 seconds. That's a massive improvement and shows how Unreal handles caching. Next, I ran the project from the NVMe in the Mini Sopuru Mini 4 Pro dock. Opening took about 47 seconds. For a project this heavy, that's actually really good, and in gameplay, FPS was basically the same as the internal drive, again sitting in the 29 to 45 FPS range. We tested this in the arena capture map with lots of FX, textures, and it still felt smooth. Looking at usage, CPU hovered between 15 and 25% user load, never maxing out, which is impressive. Memory usage sat in the 13 to 14 gigabyte range out of the 16 gigabytes available. Swap was minimal and memory pressure stayed green. That's a good sign. The Mac Mini's unified architecture is clearly doing its job. So here's the takeaway. 
Even with a full featured project like Lyra, the Mini Sapuru dock with a good NVMe SSD performs on par with Apple's internal storage. Load times differ a bit, but gameplay and stability are virtually identical. And honestly, seeing a sub $800 Mac Mini handle this project this smoothly, it surprised me in the best way. Next, let's raise the stakes with a complex project. This is where the real challenge begins. Alright, for the heavy hitter test, I went with something much more complex. The cyberpunk rooftop market environment from Laertes. This one isn't just a sample template. It's a full environment packed with over 200 unique meshes, more than 400 textures, dynamic lights, and a proper nighttime neon market vibe. Basically the kind of scene that loves to punish hardware. On the Mac Mini's internal SSD, the project technically opened in about 20 seconds, but let's be honest, it wasn't usable yet. The meshes weren't fully streamed in, shaders weren't compiled, and the viewport looked like it just woke up from a nap. So I hit play, waited it out, and after roughly 4 minutes and 34 seconds, the shaders finished compiling and the scene became properly playable. Performance-wise, the frame rate hovered between 20 and 35 FPS on high-quality settings. Not exactly buttery smooth, but considering the complexity of this scene and the fact that we're on a Mac Mini, it's honestly impressive that it runs at all without crashing. And here's the cool part. Switching graphics down to medium quality boosted performance dramatically, jumping into the 45 to 65 FPS range. That's a huge improvement and way more playable. What surprised me is that CPU and memory usage were basically unchanged from the smaller projects. The CPU stayed in the 15 to 20 percent range and memory use sat around 13.8 gigabytes out of 16. In other words, Unreal is eating the whole RAM pie every single time, but the system keeps it stable. So yeah, it's great for a box that costs under $800. You wouldn't ship a AAA cyberpunk shooter on this, but for testing, iteration, and even mid-sized indie work, it's holding its ground. All right, time for the heavy hitter. The cyberpunk rooftop market running straight from the Mini Sopuru Mini Pro external SSD. This time the project opened in just 16 seconds, which might sound unreal. And the reason is Unreal had already cached most of the shaders. So even though we're running off an external drive, it didn't need to recompile everything from scratch. I added the third person template, dropped the mannequin into the scene and started running around. On medium quality, the FPS jumped all the way up into the 50s, 60s, even touching 70 frames per second at times. Honestly, I didn't expect that kind of boost just by dialing the settings down. On high quality, frame rates settled back into the 18 to 35 range. Still totally playable, especially for this little Mac Mini setup. And remember, all of this is happening while OBS Studio is recording the entire session at 70,000 bit rate. So the CPU and memory are taking an extra hit in the background. Speaking of which, CPU hovered right around 15%, almost identical to the internal run, and memory climbed a little higher, roughly 14.4 gigabytes out of the 16 available. So yeah, the Mini is really squeezing every drop of RAM here. The takeaway? Even on a complex night scene loaded with neon lights, particles, and over 2,000 meshes, the external SSD doesn't slow the workflow at all. If anything, the bigger factor is your quality settings and how Unreal handles caching. For under 800 bucks, that's kind of wild. So here's the bottom line. This little Mac Mini can absolutely handle game development. If your focus is stylized or lower graphics projects, you could realistically run a full production pipeline on this machine without much issue. And even for more demanding high quality scenes, the performance we've seen today is honestly better than I expected. Pairing it with the Mini Sopuru Mini Pro Hub makes the setup even stronger. Having that extra external SSD, extra USB ports, SD card reader, and 4K monitor output turns the Mini into a proper workstation. Honestly, I'd call the hub a must-have if you're planning to do any serious dev work on this machine. If you're interested in picking up the Mini Sopuru iExpandMate Mini 4 Pro Hub for your own Mac Mini setup, Mini Sopuru has provided exclusive fan discounts. You'll find both the Amazon link and the official Mini Sopuru store link down in the description along with the discount codes. That way you can grab the hub at a lower price and support the channel at the same time. I went with the base model to see how far it could go, and honestly, it surprised me. 
But for bigger projects, I definitely recommend going pro. And when the M5 drops, I'll probably go for a 48 or 64 gig model myself. But enough about me, I want to hear from you. Would you buy the Mac Mini M4 right now with a hub like this, or would you wait it out for the M5 Pro version? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this test useful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who's thinking about diving into Unreal Dev on a Mac. I've got more tests coming up, and your support helps keep these videos rolling.